Hey, if you're not aware, Feedback Gaming used to be an unedited Let's Play YouTuber. And I know you guys, there's a bunch of you keep asking for when's the unedited content coming back. I want to learn the game. How do I learn the game? Well, this is the video for you. This is your opportunity to be loud and proud and tell me what more of this kind of content. This is a mostly unedited Let's Play of me playing from 1936 as Germany to 1939 as Germany, letting you see every single click that I make and hopefully learn from me and maybe become a better Hoi 4 player. Let me know if this is what you like. Enjoy. It's Feedback Gaming. Hi, welcome back to an old series I used to do called 15 Minutes of Hoi 4, where I show you every click I make in the first 15 minutes of a game. In this case, we're going to be playing as Germany 936, but we're also going to play an elite difficulty as well. Look at the penalties. You have less political power. You have less production efficiency cap by 30%. That is massive. And also research by minus 30% is reduced as well the big one being the production efficiency cap that is your overall production ability your overall to pump out any piece of equipment uh apart from ships because they don't use production efficiency and uh, the ai gains a bunch of buffs for uh fuel consumption but don't worry too much about that that's not even a big deal because the ai still mismanages its fuel pretty badly anyway here we go elite difficulty germany and uh, off we go the reason why i read over those uh, those elite difficulty attributes or penalties uh, is because you need to know what they are to compensate for them in game and as I said, the only one I'm going to compensate for is the production efficiency cap because if you go into here you can see 20% uh, a production efficiency cap which would normally be the base rate of 50% so you are severely hindered in that area my best advice for this one is to go very heavy on fighters because uh, the AI will try and out fight you so what I'm going to do is get rid of the tacticals, get rid of the close air support. We'll finish off the, the uh, most of these ships. Make sure we only produce one and then assign all the naval dot yards so as they filter down, uh, they will automatically build the new ones. Now these ones that are partially constructed up to 25%, they're going to take way too long to build, so I'm not going to bother finishing those off. Uh, when all the others are done, as it goes down to the production queue, we'll start producing these ones on the bottom. And that looks good to me. Regarding uh, research, we're going to go for machine tools to kind of, to mitigate the production efficiency cap reduction, also construction, because we're going to be building lots of civvies. Um, we're also going to be going for electronic mechanical engineering, and because you need to work on your planes really heavily, make sure your plane's the most optimal, you need to get this bonus, multi-altitude flying, extra agility. Agility is defense for fighters in the air. Now, you can also go for this one, but also on operation integrity, it's this one too, fighter veteran initiative. This one, though, is one tech later than this one. Hence, this is a superior tree for fighters. Alternatively, you can say balls to all and just for close air support. But being that it's an elite difficulty, you can have a really hard time fighting um, fighters with close air support. So that's why we're going for air superiority. The first off, we're going to go for civilian factories. Hold shift and left click on the ones at 80%. And we'll go with that to the time being. First off, we're going to cancel our tungsten from Sweden because we don't need that. Sweden, what? No. Uh, regarding production, uh, ideally you want minimum a 10 infantry equipment, uh, 10 factories on infantry equipment. Uh, two on support is good, uh, two on artillery is good. Uh, the AI spams a lot of planes on elite difficulty, so we're going to go for two on to anti-air. And the rest looks pretty good, and then the rest goes on to your fighters, and that's pretty good. You work towards mediums, and then you build a more ideal division. Uh, regarding the national focus though, we're going to go for Rhineland to get that uh, political power. I'm going to show you some fancy tricks as well to take advantage of uh, rushing uh, Sudeten as well as Anschluss. So what I did there is I selected the all, chef left click, right F, uh, sorry C, uh, fallback line, drew it, assigned them all to it, and they're all going to move over to there. We're going to convert all of these to cavalry and then we're going to produce a bunch of cavalry so this is a bit of an exploit where you get to rush through your focus tree at an incredibly fast rate and uh, what we're going to do is produce these forces and then deploy them as early as we possibly can shift left click onto the fleets move them to reserve and then click here then press g to merge them all up same with the planes too i'm not going to bother with the planes though i'm just going to delete them all there you go boom we'll make those planes a little bit later on though as time progresses apart from that though that's all good five speed and off we go. At the moment, we're waiting for the Spanish Civil War to farm air XP as well as some land XP. But air is the main resource we're going to use in this circumstance. First thing we're going to work towards is free trade for the extra construction bonus as well as factory output. Trust me, those will pay you back a long time in the long run. Now, when you're at war, you can drop down to air limited or export focus uh, to get some of your resources back. 
Uh, but for the time being, getting that extra uh, construction early on is a really, 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 really big deal. So everything else is pretty good. Merge up the fleets once again. The new ships that have just finished being produced. All the production works really good. It's really tempting to import rubber at the, early, at the start of the game, but don't do that. You need these civvies to produce as much as possible. Remember, every time you export eight rubber, you're losing one civilian factory, and that can hamper your production. Uh, Rhineland is done, so we're going to do financialists now. And to do that, we're going to deploy all of those. Then we select them all. Then we convert them into the biggest division that we've got, which is the motorized division. Then if you go into army and go into equipped and details, you can see it gets a 600 and 30,000 manpower in the field. We'll wait for them to train. As you can see, it ticks up very slowly. Go on, tick up, there you go. And then when it gets to uh, about half a million, then we can click Anschluss and do that incredibly early. Amazing, right? Free trade is now on. And are we almost there? Four, four, three. Ticking up by about 20, 30,000 every month or so. Oh no, a lot quicker than I thought, actually. And we're there there anyway, so let's go Anschluss, boom. There we go. Continue to merge up my fleet. The, the deal is, is you always want to producing submarines. You don't need any more convoys than 200. So at the moment, make lots of submarines and it gives you an opportunity to do a sea line later on in the game. It gives you lots of other opportunities to expand as well. Um, so ra radio is something you're going to use when you're at war. You can compensate for the loss of research by going for mechanical computing. But for the most part, I don't really see that as that worthwhile. So for the time being, I'm going to rush for my Fighter 2. Now, this seems unbelievably early, and trust me, it is. But having that edge in the air with more agility, more range, more air efficiency, more air attack with your fighters is going to pay off in the long run. You'll see when you're shooting down 10 fighters, 10 of their fighters with only one of yours, and over time that will pay back in the long run. Remember, the French and the British, as well as the British Empire, and all of the colonial holdings, they're always going to produce more planes than you. So the truth is you should always try and outmatch them there with better fighters. So waiting for the Spanish Civil War now. And in the meantime, what we can do is deploy two air wings. Uh, we'll go for a 50 on the fighters. And actually, we just, just need fighters because we're going to spam the air glitch. Uh, we'll drop 200 of those. We'll exercise those to level 3. Shift left click to exercise to level 3. Oh, there you go. We've got Austria now. And then we're going to go for Demand Sudan. So we'll select all the divisions we got from Austria and convert them into motorized as well. And then we'll go into army. We can see the total army size now is 737. And that should be enough to go for Demand Sudan. Yes, it is. Put the squeeze on Yugoslavia. Uh, the way it works is you, you put the squeeze on them three times in a row by the event popping up over and over again. It's by basically boring them. Eventually, it'll cause the Croatians to fire a coup, and then you have the option to go to a war against Yugoslavia. Uh, it's up to you if you want to do that one or not, though. So we're just waiting now because we want to do Sudeten as early as possible, and that's ticked up. And there we go, demand Sudeten. And this gives us lots of factories early on to get all that production uh, off and going, off to a good start. And as you can see now, we're uh, producing a lot of fires, which is good. Uh, regarding research, we're going to go straight for improved machine tools. Remember, we need to compensate for the lock, lack of production efficiency count. Even a regular old game, you will benefit from this more and more. So just think about this. Production efficiency count is something that pays off in the long run. So you don't understand how production efficiency count works. Is It ticks up every day, and then you produce more of that specific equipment. It's like basically the teams in the factories are getting more efficient at producing that specific good over time. Now, if you assign more factories to this, you'll lose some production efficiency. If you did disband the um, assembly line and make it again, you will lose production efficiency. And the higher the production efficiency cap is, by going for the research, the quicker the production efficiency will increase up to the cap. Now, the closer it gets to the cap, uh, the more the production efficiency will slow down making gains on a daily basis. But the, the simple put it, in layman's terms, the more you have, the better you're going to be, the more you're going to produce. So what we're going to do is help out our good Spanish nationalinos by sending them some volunteers. Um, pop you guys right there. And we're going to do close S, uh, S superiority wherever they're needed. We'll split them in half. Pop you here. Is this where they're fighting? Yeah, it is. So what we're going to do is tell them to assign these to use only the high priority. It means the more likely to use the most up-to-date fires. And then we're just basically going to use the exploit here. If you're not aware of it, you make the air wing size as small as possible. Every air wing size has a set chance to generate an ace. And the more air wings you've got, the more chance that an ace is going to be generated. Uh, set them to a high priority. Set them to more air crews for the air efficiency. There's no planes there, so we'll move them back over to here. There we go. On all the aces. Oh, they all come out of nowhere. And every time you generate an ace, you gain, I think, 2% war support. And uh, you also gain an ace, which gives better buffs to that air wing. 
Um, that's all you need to know, really. All right, we're going to go for Disperse Industry, Standard. And we've also got more political power, so we can go for War Economy. And we can also go for uh, Industrial Concern. You've got a Research Penalty, so if you take that into account, you can go for uh, um, an extra increase in tech to try and make up for that, mitigate those losses. There you go, another race. You tend to find they come in bursts. So you got two more, three, three in a row there. If you do find that you're not getting any for a very long time, maybe a weeks on end, you can just merge them all up and then split them back into their size again. And then eventually you'll render some more. Also check where the enemy airplanes are. As you can see, they've moved over to here now. So just move them over. Okay, so that's done now. We can go for the first Vienna reward. We want to do the fate of Czechoslovakia. Ace done. Air superiority done. Ground support, interception detection. Ground support gives you more air superiority, which reduces the enemy defense. Interception means you're more likely to intercept enemy planes. You can go for both of those. So I'm just going to go for interception for now, because you are going to play more of a defensive game overall. So what we're trying to do is get enough aces till we get 100% war support. And then at that point, we know we don't need to grind anymore. As you can see, the ratios are still fantastic. Yep, everything's looking pretty swell right now. We're getting lots of civilian factories, which I want to see. The meta of Germany in single player is to try and produce as many as possible. Civilian factories, that is, to try and make a really robust, grounded economy. You might feel like you've got too many. Trust me, you won't. When the war kicks off, you'll end up using every single one of them. And uh, using the build infrastructure when supplies low, for instance, is a godsend. Building AA is really useful as well. There are so many factors that can make a, a strategy a lot more well-rounded, put it that way. So, Ace has been generated again. Shooting them down. First Vienna reward. And Fate of Czechoslovakia requires a slightly more amount of manpower on the field. Ooh, just a hat behind by a tiny bit. Now you could choose this if you want to buy an extra, one extra division, battalion, onto this division to try and um, increase its numbers. Um, but what I think I'm probably just going to do is spam out a few of these divisions. Is there going to be enough time? No, actually, I'm going to go with my original strategy in that case. This is overall making the division size larger, so this will pop us up over the amount required to do fate as Czechoslovakia. But the deal is I'm rushing the focus tree in a cheesy way. To try my absolute best to try and farm as many factories out of Austria and Czechoslovakia as possible. The quicker I build up my factory base, the more I can have more production oof. And it's all about having most oof in this game. One more ace. Can we get one more ace? One more ace. One more. I just asked for one. The reason why we're not generating aces is because the enemy planes aren't in this region. Just send them over. And one more. No. No. Come on. This is your opportunity to shine. Show me that final ace. It's, uh, you guys are all watching and it's getting a bit shy. It doesn't want to generate that final ace. There we go, the final ace. Okay, so now we've got maximum war support and we've got like 20, 30 aces. At this point, we can just split the air wings down. I'm going to go with the classic air wing size of 200 just, just for micromanagement's sake. And then we'll add an ace on as well. Yep. That good? Awesome. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Actually, we'll split that guy as well and pop him here. That way, I don't have to keep an eye on it constantly. But overall, we're grinding lots of air XP now, which we are going to use uh, when we make upgrade our planes. Ideally, though, I want to put all my air XP into this fighter. Uh, it seems pointless not, because otherwise I want to make this fighter as robust and as well-rounded as possible. So construction once again, getting the production going. Disperse industry, just a no-brainer. More, more building slots, more production output. And the fighter, because we want good fighters, of course. Uh, we're going to annex all of Czechoslovakia, even cost us polit some political power. And now we can start working on uh, the four-year plan, which gives us factories. If we didn't need any more of those, we already have a lot. But hey, have some more, right? So we're going to drop some more uh, civvies in the areas that were 70%. Not in these four areas, though. Not these four, because this is where the Autobahn is. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, we want to build on there when... We have the option to get the maximum production speed and hence when the infrastructure is maxed out. Okay, so we're going to change the garrison to the horse division, uh, the one that's got nothing attached onto it. That way we're not going to waste any equipment. And then we're also going to prioritize uh, garrisons and uh, make sure we're on civilian oversight uh, just because it gains the most compliance. So we're going to build lots of compliance as early as possible. And that means Czechoslovakia won't become a problem later on, which it potentially can be. But in this case, not so much. There we go. Disperse industry. One thing eventually you're going to need to do is when Japan declares war on China, you're going to have to send an attache. Because trust me, you're going to need a lot of experience and that's going to help you out. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could send some divisions to the Spanish Civil War. But I just don't like the Spanish volunteer system. I just don't like the way it works. And I don't like grinding against the front line when I don't main games. It just isn't fun for me. Hey, just play what you find fun, okay? Don't let me tell you how to play the game. You play whatever you find 
enjoyable. All right, and at this point we need to go for the light aircraft designer because remember you need to get this before you produce the f you research the fighter because otherwise it won't take advantage of these extra agility and max speed bonuses. So now if you click on here and click on here you can see it's got the uh, Messerschmitt bonus for extra research as well as agility and max speed. So it's going to be a fighter plane that's going to be even better. Wow. Well, your plan is complete now and uh, we're going to go for autarky the extra construction speed of civilian. Then we're going to go for Autobahn. What we're going to do is build refineries in the Autobahn region there. Oh, Bohemia's have a broken factory. And then as it kind of slowly works its way down, uh, we'll end up producing a little bit of rubber as well as a little bit of oil, which we will we'll end up using. All part of the course, part of the, the strategy. Planes are moved over again. That's why it's always good to have it in two separate air wings because you always want to be grinding air experience. There's never a moment you need to be not grinding air experience. Pan unknown focus, so we don't know what they're up to. Uh, they're due to declare war in China. That way we can uh, get that Tashi sent over. Everything else is looking pretty good though. We need overall 120 divisions. So what I'm gonna do is produce a bunch of these crappy standard divisions. Uh, there we go, 58, so that's 120. We'll produce those and pop them right there. As you can see, we need a lot of guns for this. So what I'll do is I'll prioritize that as well. So that's five army groups of 24 infantry, one on the border of France, one on East Prussia, and then three on the border of Western Poland as well. And then eventually, when things pro progress, you pull one division off the Western Front and put it on the border of the Dutch because you're going to end up being at war with the Dutch anyway. They always end up joining the Allies and don't want this to happen when you're mid-war because it's going to cause a lot of problems. The Autobahn is on the way. So this production is looking pretty rock solid right now. I'm really happy with this. Construction 2 is done. Now we can start working towards advanced machine tools. So we're going to use two of those 100% speed boosts from the four-year plan on... Uh, get any advanced machine tools and also assembly line production. Once again, make, mitigating the losses you're experiencing from playing on elite difficulty. But now we're going to go for a naval strike. Don't use the 100% boost because we're saving air experience. The only time you want to use your air experience is if you max out of 500. In that circumstance, that's when you would use the extra 100. Because otherwise, you're not going to gain any more over 500 anyway. So industrial is done now. Let's have a look. So we're working on the air doctrines. We're working on that. We're not going to use any boosts in here. So you can just do the, the basic research now, maybe just interwar artillery or just basic equipment, just to give make your infantry divisions a little bit more well-rounded. Then the attache, make sure you stop sending uh, improving relations, and then you're going to gain a little bit more XP overall. And trust me, this is going to go a long, long, long way of making your Germany a lot more well-rounded. Did I say that before? Am I saying that again? Yeah, Germany's going to be more well-rounded. There you go, we're fighting those planes. Now we're going to for Hermann Goering Wurt. And that gains extra civvies. And now we can also get max infrastructure in the Autobahn region. Yeah, make sure we're producing the civilian ones, overproducing everything else. And now, now we can prioritize production in Autobahn. 100% boost means these will be constructed a lot significantly quicker. And you can see now we've got such a big civilian economy, which once again will go a long way to helping the eventual wall economy that's going to come along the way. Popular questions everyone asks me, why don't I ever build extra mills? There just isn't any point. There isn't any point. I just don't bother because I just don't think there's any point. You will gain lots of mills from France, Poland, the Lowlands, and all the lands that you annex through your focus tree. So just don't bother. You don't need to. I've just realized, actually, where I should be researching right now is actually uh, armor. <laughs> I've totally forgotten about my armor. Whoops. Drop you guys down. I realize I'm not set this to... Uh Collapse. We just drop these guys now. We've only got 82. Uh, 40, 60, 58, yeah. And then say only produce those. So when you deploy these ones, if it's set to one, it means it'll collapse them. So they won't continuously produce new infantry divisions. Extra military factories now. And uh, hmm. what we could do in the meantime then is produce the wisp. The wisp, the wisp is it? Uh, and then put more into light tanks. Then we convert all of our light tanks as well as, as well as the ones we got from Czechoslovakia um, directly uh, into SPGs. More civvies. Produce as many of them as possible. An alternative strategy, if you weren't playing on elite difficulty, would be to rush down Disperse Industry 3 and 4 to get more building slots. Then you could build more heavily in the Sudeten. More building slots means more opportunities to obviously build even taller before the war even begins, which is always... All right, pop you here. 
Make sure we're producing only one of you, and then make sure we convert. So right now, as you can see, oops, you can go here, you can see that we've got lots and lots of old tanks. Not only upgrading from tank level tank 1s, but also upgrading from tank 2s into the SPG Light 2s, uh, which saves a lot of production in the long run. And then we're going to use those built into our tank division to do lots of lots of damage. And then go for the medium tank now. And then we go for the armor tech, uh, which is the best one to go for. Porsche is a good one for the extra armor. Uh, in single player, they'll probably be able to reliability in the soft attack there. Extra research slot. Uh, Yugoslav fighters, this is a good one because it reduces consumer goods for 180 days. We don't plan on using the tactical bomber, so I don't think there's much point. Have a little look at the penalty, 50% for the fighters. Um, there is going to be a point where we're going to have to import aluminium and rubber to keep the production going. I'm trying to find the ideal sweet spot. That, that way we don't lose any of our production. We are getting a lot closer though. Uh, you've got here and here. Good. That's fine. When we produce a, a reasonable amount of rubber, then we can um, not have to import as much. Uh, drop you guys off here. Deploy them as quick as we can. That's good. Not a lot going off in the air anymore now. Deploy some more air wings. So once again, we're going to go for, go for the classic 200 air wing size. Uh, deploy and we can also go for uh, army innovation so we can work on the better armor tactical bombers once again make 200 air wing size for those deployed good we've got a little bit of close air support so might as well just use it some naval bombers too like to all you guys and exercise them to level three good advanced machine tools is done then we can go for the assembly line production then we can go for dispersed industry three you don't want to waste your bonus uh, for assembler line uh, on disperse three, you want to make sure the bonus is here because this is further in the future, 1941. That way, you get to take advantage of more production efficiency. And this, once again, will go a long way in making sure you're producing more of what you need. French operative captured. Speaking of that, actually, we probably should be um, working on our spy agency now. Okay, we'll work on that now. And then we'll also import some rubber and also import some aluminium. Good, and now at this point we can start working on a more ideal ideal division template as well. We'll start off with this one because we're going to go for a 40 width, so we're going to go for four SPGs. Um, support artillery, add that on. Having trouble with supply? Here we are. Oh, I realize what I've just done there. I've actually changed the division template over to this. Ha! <laughs> so, in a weird way, this has actually kind of worked out how I wanted because that means our, our uh, equipment's now... Uh, manpower in the field is now 1.1 million, which is insane. All right, once again, dogfighting or interception. This is a tough one, this one, because both of these are pretty good. Uh, but based on how we're going to play, I think if you want to play safe, you go for interception. But if you want to play ballsy, big and strong, go for dogfighting. I'm going to convert all of these now to standard infantry. And go for that. Now we can start working on our doctrines as well. The upgrades we want to go for are going to be localized training centers so we can make specific spies that gain a bonus towards the nationality we're going to plant them into. Deploy those infantry. Localized training centers is good. The biggest nation you're going to use spies in mostly is going to be the Soviet Union. So my advice is to recruit all from the Soviets and build networks inside of them. And also the upgrades you want to go for early on to tend to be the most advantageous is army department, um, suicide pills, and then I suppose going for cryptology department can be a second one too, because that gives bonus to air detection as well. Yeah. So in that case, let's go for let's go former department actually. You need to get the upgrades into your spy agency because you need to get another spy, and you need five upgrades minimum to do that. At this point, we've got we're sitting on a little bit of political power, so I'm trying to think what the best option is right this moment. Uh, Prince of Terror is really good, but we're not going to be using that as of yet. I think we're going to go for the elusive gentleman. I realize I've produced way way too many uh actual horse divisions for infantry oh it's just interesting to know okay well there you go we've got more i guess it's having to more that you're not necessarily going to use is going to help you so i'm trying to make even stacks here i'm making a jolly good balls up of this all right but we have an extra an extra 20 divisions just floating around so one will go here another one will go here and then you guys i'll shift left click give it to a field marshal he'll do go here and off you go. Shift them here. Exercise to level three. Exercise to level three. And there we go. I guess this extra one, I guess I could use that on the border of the Dutch. Hmm. Oh, I'll see where I can do that. Anyway, radio interception group is what you want to go for. But, yeah, no, actually, I'm going to go for that. Because the quicker we get decryption on the Britain, uh, the easy it's going to be for the air war. So Britain's always the one you want to go for. And then secondary, you want to go for the Soviet Union. So, research, research treaty with the USSR. They'll accept. 
and then we go for the army innovations too and you can also start working on blitzkrieg as well once again i'm just gonna wait for this to research first uh, you could if you wanted to jump onto a different research and come back to Panzer 3 and then you get it a lot quicker But seeing as we've put so much time into Panzer 3, we might as well just stick with that Radio interception group, another spy option What we need to do is wait for the option to recruit a spy from the Soviet Union So don't just proactively recruit a spy, wait until you get the option to get a, a Soviet spy Because once again that's where most of these spies are going to be used And you get a bonus of 25% building a spy network if it's a spy from that local nationality Very, very important Build two more refineries there and there. Uh, one there and there. And here, here, here. There we go. Okay, it's time now to... Uh, oh, we're already important. Never mind. I did it automatically like I automatically knew. Like I automatically knew. Radio interception is done now, so we can go for army department. Yeah, that production is looking pretty strong. I think I'm really happy with that. Producing lots and lots of fighters. Spanish Civil War is still in full force. Fighting uh, close air support of the Soviets there. And once again, working on those upgrades. Once again, we're going to go for uh, suicide pills. All right, that's all done now. So now we can go for Eastern claims and actually think about going to war. Alternatively, how much time we got? Oh, actually, we could go for uh, coal liquefaction first, actually. Trying to always prioritize all the factories in the Autobahn region due to the infrastructure and then working on everywhere else in the nation. Hence the reason why I built the refineries in that region first. Got the option to get the spy from the service. Oh, we've, we've, our only spy has been captured. That really sucks. We're going to have to send a spy to uh, save a spy. Seeing as we've got another slot that's open, it might be just to be a good idea. Pop you here. Also going to go for... Interrogation can be good sometimes. I don't think there's anything that jumps out. Machine assisted description. We'll go for that one. We've got mechanical computer, but we need to research that first. So for the time being, there's nothing else that we actually do need. Um, another good option is to go for worker conditions as early as possible because you want to try and stack as much stability as you can. Because when you go to war, your stability will take a hit and you need to keep that stability up to reduce partisans. Um, so now we use this one spy, sadly, to recruit the other spy and save them, which sadly costs us a lot of equipment design, which is really annoying too, so we'll prioritize that. A little bit unlucky, which is sad, so Panzer 2 is complete. Panzer 3, should I say, and the Panzer 3, we're gonna produce. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna avoid exercising my troops here, because I realize I'm losing a lot of infantry equipment from this. As long as they're not level one greens, that's fine. Some of them are still out. We'll work on that later. Option to get a spy in the Soviets. Not yet. Commencing the operation to save that other spy is on, on its way. The Fighter 2 is complete. The Fighter 2. Here we go. Range first. This gains more air efficiency over all air zones. Trust me, this will pay back in the long run. Then engine for the extra agility, which results in more extra attack. And there we go. Producing our number one fighter there. Just what we need. Put that just above the motorized because we want to make sure all rubber goes to the fighter first. Uh, synthetic rubber is next. We need a little bit of tungsten. We'll get that from Malaya. I don't really care too much about where I recruit my, uh, where I get my, uh, uh, my resources from. It doesn't make a big difference overall. If you're playing a multiplayer game and you're min-maxing heavily, I guess you don't want to work with the allies, I suppose. Um, go for radio now because eventually I'll forget about that and I'll cause some problems. Want to get the spy. Can we get the spy inside Russia? Yes, we can. There we go. View here. Uh, disperse industry three is complete. We've got more building slots. We also go for the extra rubber. We will build the extra civvies. Go for those ones as soon as possible. As I said before, really important. And now we've got synthetic rubber. We can go for assert Eastern claims and Danzig or war. Start to make the more ideal division template too for the tanks. And we start off with this, then we work up from there. Make sure this is prioritized. And I think for the most part, this is actually really good though. I like that. You want to start with three because three is enough to make encirclements and then work up from there. Um, yeah, you want to keep an eye on your production amounts though. Um, SPGs, not a problem. Uh, medium tanks though, under the hand, that's a bit of a deal. We're gonna have to put more production into that. But everything else though is clockwork. Yeah, everything else is looking pretty, pretty sweet. Max war support, max stability, that's good. Need a little bit of political power when the war kicks off, then we can assign into our high command so we can do extra damage. Oil processing is worthless. I guess construction is going to be worthwhile when we go to war. Might be a good idea right now to start working on just passive bonuses just to make sure infantry are a little bit more well-rounded. Production on these tanks is looking pretty good though. I can deploy them, which I will do. Assign it to a good general. I personally like, there are some generals I have a preference for just based on their attack ability. Um, the historical generals with Panzer Leader tend to be safe bets. So if you want to go for those, my advice, just do it like Rommel, for instance, and uh, Heinz Guderian. 
There's one called that's a war hero that I quite like. Kessering. These are brilliant strategies. I mean he's more likely to roll points into attack when he levels up. Um go for here, then we go for Walter Modal. Modal gains the aggressive assaulter perk. And pop you there, put you in reserve. You really want to exercise this guy to level three. Really important that because it'll do the most damage, but you want to get the strength up to 100% because otherwise your exercise uh, is not as efficient as it should be. So now you need to go for Eastern Claims. What are these divisions doing here? I guess these ones could be assigned onto the Dutch border. And now you can start mass assigning. Just go for the ones with the most attack or defense. It doesn't matter. I always say no to the attache. Just a little bit of political power. Trust me, it pays back in the long run. There we go. That looks pretty good. Make sure these guys are exercised. Make sure you deploy all your air wings. Good, and we can go for multi-altitude fighting now, which is the, the doctrine tech that we needed the most. Same with these guys too. These guys can come home now. Send them home and exercise those boys to level three. You can also assign your aces as well now. That's good. Another really good strategy that tends to pay off in the long run is to improve reliability of tanks. That meaning when you exercise them, uh, they're gonna, you're going to lose them um, into exercise. I think if you get them above a certain percentage of reliability that you never lose them or very, very rarely lose them when you're exercising them. That always tends to be a pretty sound strategy to pay off in the long run. The production though is looking pretty good. When it comes down to support equipment though, it tends to always be a problem. So my advice is take off the engineers, off the infantry, and then you'll tend to get all your support equipment back. Which is good. Artillery on the other hand could be worked on, so we'll work on that. One more into AA. Eventually want to add that onto infantry because that pays off in the long run as well. Eastern Claims is done. Then we do Danzig or War. And you can sign your spies here and here. And you can see they'll build their network pretty quickly due to the fact two of them are Soviet turncoats. And that is practically it, gentlemen and girl. Uh, this is this is it. This is your opportunity, guys. Let me know if you like this kind of content. A like and a comment on this video lets me know you want to see more of this. If you do, let me know. Be loud, be proud, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.